the prescription for disaster is to totally let down our guard and in the spring assume that, you know, we had it with COVID, we're over COVID. As you know, we're, we'll be over COVID when COVID is over us. And that has not happened at the present time. And particularly with these variants circulating, I think we need to be extraordinarily careful and wise. And so we can open up our circles, but we need to do it slowly and carefully. Welcome to 20 Minute Health Talk, where some of the brightest minds in healthcare help us break down the latest news and developments. I'm your host, Rob Hoyle, alongside my co-host, Chris Gazuski. And today, our very special guest is Dr. Bruce Farber. Dr. Farber is Chief Public Health and Epidemiology Officer for Northwell Health, and he's also the Chief of Infectious Diseases at North Shore University Hospital and LIJ. Dr. Farber, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a long, strange trip, this whole COVID thing. And just as we're starting to feel good and we have a vaccine, all of a sudden in the news, we're hearing about variants, the South African variant and uh, the UK variant. And it's all very scary. Explain to us what is a variant and what we need to know about it. Sure. Thanks for having me. So I think uh, people will recall that the uh, coronavirus has one specific antigen called the spike A protein that's on the surface of the virus. And that critical protein is the target of all of our vaccines, all of them, as well as our crucial monoclonal antibodies. And they have been genetically engineered, those vaccines, to bind to that spike A protein, which then allows it to neutralize the virus that is trying to infect you. So the matchup, the lock and key between the antibodies that we make and that spike A protein are critical. Any changes in that lock and key on either side lead to problems. So let me be very specific. We were doing very well. Our vaccines work very well, but now these variants are cropping up. One of the variants, the B117 from Britain, as well as the African 351 and probably the California, as well as the Brazilian P2 variants, all seem to be more capable of binding to our nasal epithelial cells, which are making them one more contagious. Secondly, many of those variants also have mutations in that spike A protein such that those original antibodies, monoclonal antibodies, don't bind as, as well. And that certainly applies to the monoclonals in the South African strain. Thirdly, some of those variants, particularly the South African and Brazilian one, don't match up quite as well to the vaccine-induced antibodies as the regular wild-type COVID uh, virus that preceded it. So those are all serious alarms and worthy of the attention that is being paid to them. Fortunately, all of the vaccines with the exception of one, the AstraZeneca, have been shown to moderately prevent disease, not quite as well in the other strains, but more importantly, prevent hospitalizations and death. So, Dr. Farber, you're saying if you do get the vaccine and all of a sudden you do come in contact with one of these other variants and you do get it, the vaccine may not stop it, but it'll help make minimize the disease. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. It'll ameliorate. It. And that's very similar, by the way, to what happens with flu. How many people over the last 20 years have told me I got a flu shot, but I still got the flu? And my answer is absolutely. The flu vaccine is not particularly good vaccine in preventing flu somewhere between 40 and 60% at best, clearly inferior to the COVID vaccines. But what it is pretty good at is preventing people from getting the flu and winding up in a hospital and dying. All vaccines are helpful at this point in time. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine similarly prevents disease in a moderate percent, depending upon which group you look at, somewhere in the 66 to 70% range, roughly. Um, but Equally important is it's very good at preventing hospitalization and death. And that's what's most important. We want to protect our patients. We want to protect our family. We want to protect ourselves. And I am definitely a believer. Look, a lot of people, when this epidemic started, said, you know, I think the vaccine will probably be okay, but I'm going to give it some time. I don't want to be the first out of the gate to see if anything crops up. And I now tell them that was fine then, but over 50 million people have received one of these messenger RNA vaccines. And that's quite an amazing number. Um, it's such a large number that I don't think we need to wait any longer. 
As a matter of fact, no vaccine has ever been released where after 3 million people have gotten it, an untoward side effect has been reported. Um, and this vaccine has had a remarkable safety record despite the fact that 50 million people have gotten it. Yes, there's a lot of reactogenicity, meaning there's a painful arm, fever, chill, sweats, malaise, not feeling well, but that pretty much all goes away between day two and at most day five, and serious side effects have not been reported. Equally um, reassuring is that there's been no problem in pregnant women getting the vaccine, and there's a lot of problems with COVID in pregnant women. So I am in favor of giving pregnant women the vaccine. There's no suggestion of any problem with fertility or with um, lactating women who want to continue to breastfeed. So we uh, we have another segment, a segment that we like to do, and it's called Off Your Chest. What is one of the things that you would um, like to, to, to get off your chest, to, to get out in the, in the public, uh, to try to set the record straight? Look, COVID is the third most common cause of death now in the United States unbelievable statistic. And these vaccines are really manna from heaven in the sense that without them, I think this, we would be in a catastrophic situation, literally. Young people um, and uh, minority groups have been much more skeptical of that vaccine. And I wish there was a way that I could convince them that the waiting is over. Now is the time to get the vaccine. What do you say to somebody, maybe a cousin or a family member that might say to you, Dr. Farber, break it down to me in lay terms. Why should I not be afraid of that vaccine? Why is the vaccine safe? Well, I would say several things. One is this vaccine is not a live virus vaccine. This vaccine cannot give you COVID. These are not going to change your DNA. They are not going to reproduce within your cells and turn your cells into something they are not. I would love to say that, you know, my my DNA could 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 be changed to make me taller and stronger and a better <laughs> athlete. But these shots are not going to do that. And so they're just all they're doing is stimulating your immune system to make one antibody against one specific protein of this virus. And so in many regards, they're much safer than many of the vaccines we continue to use and have used in the past. And I think the fact that 50 million people have 